All right, we're, uh, we're going to switch gears here a little bit because that's what we do at Petra Kucha Night. Our next presenter is Rebecca Fletcher, who comes from the Edmonton Social Planning Council, bringing a topical conversation to PKN, uh, a living wage in Edmonton. So please welcome Rebecca with More Than Minimum. Good evening. I'm going to talk about the living wage in Edmonton. I'm going to talk about poverty, mention the minimum wage a little bit, and clear up some misconceptions that a lot of us have about poverty. I know that before I started working in a nonprofit, poverty wasn't something that was at the top of my head all the time, but I think it's something that should be at the forefront. One in five Albertans lives in poverty. So when we look at the living wage, we have a national standard for developing it. We have a hypothetical family. There's four people in it. A child in elementary school, a child in daycare, and two parents who both work full time. One parent takes a car and thus incurs all the costs involved in maintaining and running a vehicle, and the other parent has a transit pass. Now, the minimum wage here is 11.20 an hour, on October 1st, it's going to go up to 12.20, but the living wage, the amount you need to maintain a modest and stable lifestyle is $16.69. And this wage doesn't include savings for things like vacations. It doesn't include things for savings for debt repayment or your children's education. Included in it is two weeks of emergency funds, that's it. So if we're going to take 1669 instead of the minimum wage mandated by the government, what are we going to do with it? Why am I telling you this sob story about poverty in Edmonton? It's 124,000 people in Edmonton live in poverty. Well, Edmonton has been prospering for a very long time. We've had a booming economy, our population has been growing, and that means that the most vulnerable people are often left behind. The news stories focus on the success stories. The, the presentation we just heard was brilliant, but we're neglecting the people who need our help. When you have a minimum wage of 11.20 or 12.20 per hour, you're stuck. You cannot, for example, go out for pizza. You absolutely cannot save for education. You cannot save for vacations. You are stuck in a cycle, and it often feels like you are outside looking in. One of the biggest misconceptions about poverty is that people making low wages are teenagers, but actually 80% of them are adults with families. And of these families, one in five children in Edmonton lives in poverty. There's also a really big gender gap. You know, um, we hear about the wage gap for women but the poverty gap is even bigger. 60% of the poor people in Alberta are women. So what are our determinants for poverty besides being a child and besides being a woman? Well, there is a lack of access to things like increasing wages, to social services, to low income transit, to rent subsidies. Part of this is systemic. Part of this is just unfortunate, part of being in an isolated community. The determinants of poverty are, the systemic determinants of poverty include things like high tuition. They include a lack of a low income transit pass, although to be fair, Edmonton will be initiating that very soon. Lack of rental subsidies. Mental illness is huge. If you have a mental illness, you're more likely to be poor. If you're poor, you're more likely to have a mental illness. And when you have a mental illness, it is very, very difficult to maintain a steady job. It is difficult to move forward in the company and make more money. So when we talk about the living wage, the wage we need to maintain a modest but stable lifestyle, Edmonton has been working very hard on this. If you look at the Ed Poverty Edmonton roadmap, the living wage is mentioned. The city of Edmonton is paying a living wage to all of its employees and contractors. 
And just in the news yesterday, I saw a few more local businesses doing this. Why do we care about the poor, though? I know when I talk about businesses, they often struggle. They need to make a living. But if we look at who is poor, and if we talk to those people, then we can understand their lived experiences, and we can be inspired to help. The city of Edmonton asked Edmontonians about this. What can we do? Part of it was about learning lived experiences. Part of it was about sharing the wealth that we have. Part of it was donating to charity. One really big thing that they mentioned though, and by they I mean us, was empowering communities to make a change. Not relying on governments, not relying on employers, but empowering communities to have things like accessible Medicare, accessible childcare. Unfortunately, in Edmonton, we have one of the largest income gaps in the country. The poor are at the very bottom and the rich are at the very top. Alberta has the highest median income in the country. And I heard the number the other day, it is obscenely large. It's something like 70, 80,000. When you are a business, or a business owner, and you hear me saying, pay your staff more, you think I'm crazy. But the truth is, when you pay your employees more, they do better work, there's less absenteeism, and you can keep them around to keep their knowledge and transfer that around. The other good thing about raising people's ra income is that the lowest income people are the people most likely to spend their income in the community. It boosts the community. Our local economy goes up. So what I want you to do after this is look on the internet about our living wage. I want you to look about poverty and I want you to tell your friends, your families, and your employers that you need to be paying people more to get better work, a better economy, and to lift Edmontonians out of poverty. Thank you.